In this video, we're going to discuss the area problem. Specifically, we're going to talk about how we can find the area under a curve. So specifically a function. So here I have an example, uh, y equals negative two thirds x cubed plus five halves x squared plus one. Now note, under for us means between the curve and the x-axis on a closed interval a comma b. So maybe our closed interval could be from one to three. And so this is the shaded area is what we're trying to calculate. Well, we're gonna do this in kind of a simplistic way. We're gonna to try to estimate the area by using the area of specific rectangles. And we say cover, but we don't necessarily cover. We may uh, have some area, bit of area which is left over. Um, but we're gonna use some rectangles. We're gonna calculate the area of the rectangles in a very simplistic way. And then we're gonna add up the area of the rectangles to get an estimate of the area. And the way we start is by dividing up this interval from one to three into uh, equal sized bases. So we're gonna break up one to three into sub intervals all with the same length. Like we did here, each of these sub intervals have length of 0 0.5. So what that does is break up our region into four smaller regions. And we're going to use one rectangle for each of these smaller regions. And so the rectangle is going to have a base of 0 0.5. All of the rectangles will have a base of 0 0.5. So what about the height? Well, we're going to choose in a simplistic way, but systematic way, how to find the height. So we're going to be consistent with each region. In other words, whatever idea I use for finding the height in the first rectangle, I'll use that same idea or formula to find the height in all of the rectangles. So for example, I could choose the y coordinate at the left endpoint of the base. So in my first region here, my left endpoint is when x equals 1. So I could go up to uh, the y coordinate here, and I would choose that as the height. So this would be the rectangle that I would use in the first region. And then in the second region, again, I would go, the left end point is 1.5. So I would choose this height, this y value as the height and calculate the area of this rectangle and so on. So I've got my four rectangles with my heights chosen, all using the same left end point or the same way using the left endpoint. And now let's get an estimate for the area. So the base is always 0 0.5. The height of the first rectangle is going to be f at 1. So I have to go back to my original equation here, substitute x equals 1, and I get about 2.83 to two decimal places. And then I can do the same thing for the next rectangle its height is going to be the function value when x equals 1.5, and that's approximately 4.39, again, rounding to two decimal places. And then I can do the same for rectangle three and rectangle four. So I get the estimated or approximate values for the area of those four rectangles. And so my area is going to be approximately so let me make that correction here. It's not equal, but it's going to be approximately 0.5. 
the area of the four rectangles. Now notice that since the base is all the same, to save some time, I could factor out the 0 0.5 and then just put the heights inside the brackets. And I get a value of about 9.55. Now, just by looking at the picture, I can see that 9.55 is too small, that my rectangle for 1, 2, and 3 are smaller than uh, the actual region that I need to calculate. For rectangle four, the rectangle is a little bit bigger, but I can see that it's not going to make up for the other one. So that's going to be a small value or a small approximation. Now, since we have four rectangles and we use the left endpoint to find the height, we call this approximation or estimate to be L sub four. So we say that the area is approximately L sub four, which we calculated to be 9.55 square units. Now, alternatively, and we're going to find this probably more useful, is that we could choose the height at the right endpoint of the base. And so in the first region here, I would go over to 1.5, find the y coordinate of the point on the graph when x equals 1.5, that will be the height of that rectangle. And I do the same with the remaining rectangles. So again, the base doesn't change, it's, they're all still 0 0.5. And so the height of the first rectangle is the function value when x equals 1.5, and that's about 4.39. Again, rounding to correct to two decimal places. And then I find the function values at the right endpoints of the remaining rectangles. And then I could add those, the area of those rectangles up. So it would be base times height, but again, the base is all 0 0.5, so I went ahead and factored that out. Just to add up the remaining heights, and that's about 10.89. So I have two estimates, my r sub 4. 4 is telling me I have four rectangles. r tells me that I use the right endpoint. All right. So in order to do better than just a crude approximation, uh, let's develop some notation. So we broke up our region by dividing up our interval from A to B into equal size portions. And we're going to call the endpoints of those portions or subintervals as x sub with a subscript. So the very first point A, we're going to call x sub 0. And then the next endpoint, we're going to call x sub 1, and so on until we get to the very end, which is B. And that's going to be, well, x sub 4, because we have four rectangles. Now we're going to call the number of rectangles n. And so, in general, B is going to correspond with X sub N. A always corresponds to X sub zero. We're going to call delta X the length of each one of these sub intervals, which is going to be the same as the base of each uh, rectangle. And we can calculate delta x as, of course, the difference between consecutive x values, but uh, it's going to be the same as taking the whole length of the interval, b minus a, and dividing by n. So that ensures that our base is the same for all the rectangles. And so the ith left endpoint is x sub i minus 1. So the left endpoint for the first region 
is x sub 0. For the second region, the left endpoint is x sub 1. And for the third region, the left endpoint is x sub 2, and so on. Now the ith ripe endpoint is x sub i. So again, for the first region, the right endpoint is x sub 1. For the second region, the right endpoint is x sub 2, and so on. Now an important formula we're going to use is that we can write x sub i as a plus i times delta x. So just think about that. You start at a, if you go over 1 delta x, you're at x sub 1. If you go over 2 delta x's, meaning you add 2 times delta x to the number a, you're going to get x sub 2. So in general, x sub i is start with a and then add i times delta x. Now when we have this notation, all right, I can see that, oh, okay, uh, L sub n is going to be delta x in brackets, the sum f of x sub 0 plus f of x sub 1, all the way up to f sub x sub n minus 1, which is uh, pretty hard to say. Uh, R sub n is a little bit easier. Um, you have delta x on the outside. And then the sum goes from f of x sub 1 all the way up to f of x sub n. Now, writing out this sum with the three dots and writing out all the terms can get tiring. So we have this summation notation. It's a shorthand for writing sums. And so let's just do a quick review of that. We use this Greek letter sigma, capital sigma, to represent the summation. We have the index of summation. In our case, it's i. i is the bit that's changing, because we're going from 0 to 1 to 2, all the way up to n minus 1. So at the bottom, we say, where do we start? At the top, we say, where do we stop? We stop when i equals n sub 1. And so that is our shorthand for writing uh, a sum. And we could also write the r sub n using the summation notation. Uh, we have delta x out in front, and then we have the sum of i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i. So, now, let's get back to the question at hand. We had some pretty crude approximations for the area that we were looking for. How can we improve those approximations? Well, one way we could do it is to simply have more rectangles which are skinnier. So the base is going to be smaller. So if I were to take 10 rectangles, then my delta x would be 2 over 10, or 0 0.2. And if I wanted an even better approximation, I could use even more rectangles. If I'm using technology, I could use hundreds or thousands of rectangles and get an enhanced uh, approximation. But it's still an approximation. So the best approximation would be if I could use infinitely many rectangles. And so that's the same idea as having the limit as n goes to infinity of one of our approximations. And if it's the limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n, then it would be the limit as n goes to infinity of delta x times the sum of i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i. And I'm usually going to use r sub n. But I could use L sub n, I would get the same value if the limit exists. Now, this limit can be very challenging, but for very simple polynomials, we can actually evaluate the limit. 
And in order to do that, we're going to need some useful identities. So the first one is if you add up n terms, which are all the same, you're just going to get n times the term. So if I have n values of 1, that's going to add up to n. If I add up the first n counting number, so if I add 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n, you get the formula n times n plus 1 over 2. If I add up the first n squares, so if I go from get 1 plus 4 plus 9 all the way up to n squared, that's the same as n parentheses n plus 1 parentheses 2n plus 1 all over 6. And we'll stop with the cubes. If I add up the first n cubes, so 1 plus 8 plus 27 and so on up to n cubed, it's interesting, you get the quantity n times n plus 1 over 2 in brackets all square. So for an example, let's find the area under the curve uh, y equals mx. So that's just going to be a straight line whose slope is m passing through the origin. And we're going to look at the interval 0 to b. So x goes from 0 to b. So that's just going to be a triangle. So let's calculate the area here. We can use uh, our formulas. Delta x is going to be b minus a over n, which will simplify to b over n. Our ith value of x is just going to be a plus i times delta x which will be, well, 0 plus i times b over n, that's my delta x, which I'll write as bi over n. And f of x sub i is just m times xi, but since xi is bi over n, that'll be m bi over n. So let's calculate r sub n for this particular region. I'll substitute my values for delta x and f of x sub i, and I get this sum. Now in this sum, n, b, and m are independent of i. Do, they do not change as i changes, so I can factor them out of the sum. And so I'll have outside the sum m, b squared, over n squared, and the sum is i equals 1 to n i. And we have an identity for that, so I can replace that with our formula n times n plus 1 over 2. So first I'll multiply things out inside the brackets, and then I'll use the distributive property, and the only thing that would be left in order to get my value for the area is to take the limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n, which would be the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms I just computed. And of these two terms, the second term will go to zero. which leaves us with m times b squared over 2. So let's look at one last example here. Oh, by the way, that m b squared over 2, if we're thinking about this as a rectangle, it should be half base times height. And the height of this, I said rectangle, but I meant triangle. The height of this triangle is just m times b. So m b squared over 2 is 1 half the base times the height. All right, one last example here. We are looking at the area under y equals x squared between 0 and b. So our first part is still going to be delta x is still going to be b over n, like in the previous example. And x sub i will still be bi over n as we had in the previous example. 
This time f of x sub i is going to be x sub i squared. So that'll turn out to be b squared i squared over n squared. So our r sub n approximation would be delta x times the summation i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i. Substituting what I just calculated, delta x is b over n, f of x sub i is b squared times i squared over n squared. And as before, the b and the n are independent of i, so they can be factored out in front of the summation sign. And so I'll get b cubed over n cubed times the summation i equals 1 to n of i squared. And we have an identity for that sum. The formula was n, parentheses n plus 1, parentheses 2n plus 1, all over 6. So that's going to be multiplied by b cubed over n cubed. So as before, we'll first multiply out the factors inside the brackets, then use the distributive property. And so the last thing will be to take the limit. So the area will be the limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n. And that will be the limit as n goes to infinity. Of these three terms, I can simplify. The first two, I'll get b cubed over 3 plus b cubed over 2n. And then finally, b cubed over 6n squared. And as n goes to infinity, the second two terms go to 0. And so we are going to be left with I'm sorry, we'll be left with b cubed over n. So just one last thing. Um, both L sub n and R sub n, using the left endpoint and the right endpoint, are not very good for actually finding numerical approximations. So if we ever want to get a decent numerical approximation, one thing that we can use generally is this following formula. And we're going to use capital M sub n. It's going to be delta x on the outside as it was before. And then on the inside, we're going to have f of x sub 1 bar plus f at x sub 2 bar all the way up to the sum with f of x sub n bar. And what is these bar values? Um, well, x sub 1 bar is the sum x0 plus x1 over 2. x sub 2 bar is x1 plus x2 over 2. And in general, x sub i bar is x sub i minus 1 plus x sub i over 2. Uh, geometrically, what that means is that x sub i bar is the midpoint of the interval from x sub i minus 1 to x sub i. And we can see with our uh, original example why this would be a better approximation in general. So uh, if I look at the uh, midpoints here of my four sub intervals, and I draw the height of my rectangle at the y coordinate corresponding to those midpoints, you can see that every rectangle is outside of the area we want, but then there's a little bit which is inside. And so we've got a little bit which is an overestimate, we've got another part that's an underestimate, and they tend to cancel each other out almost. Not entirely and not always, but many times you do. And so that's why you get a better approximation using the midpoint rule.